how important is the creative process and and actually it being inside of creative creating something i mean you said that doctors can do this lawyers can do this is there a certain part of the range of the the brain that is specifically engaged while we are entering a flow state yeah it's a fantastic question um and so when i talk about flow i am literally talking about three neurobiological processes when somebody is in flow their brain so so let, let, let me back up and say normally under normal conditions right now for example you and i are in conversation and if i were to look inside your brain what i would see is a lot of activity in your prefrontal cortex the kind of latest newest part of your brain where you do a lot of complex decision making and long-term planning and things along those sorts and i your brain waves would be in the high beta range which is where we are when we're thinking and conversing and whatnot mm -hmm. and neurochemically we'd see sort of standard attention and stress hormones so we'd see cortisol norepinephrine and adrenaline probably that's sort of 21st century normal when we move into flow everything changes the prefrontal cortex starts to deactivate so it turns off this area that's hyperactive right now it starts to shut off your brain waves move from you know, agitated beta down towards calmer alpha and meditative theta, and the stress hormones get flushed out of your system and they're replaced by feel good performance enhancing neurochemicals like dopamine, serotonin, and anandamide and endorphins and such. So there's a, there's, when I'm speaking about flow, I'm talking about a very specific shift in neurobiology that accompany those seven phenomenological characteristics I talked about earlier. Phenomenological is just a fancy way of saying, this is how these things make, this is how this experience makes me feel. So this takes away the 10% of our brain myth, right? Yeah, so the, it, it's, a, it's, a funny, it's a funny thing, and it's actually one of the things that's kind of steered a lot of this research sideways for a long time. But way back at the turn of the century, a psychologist, a Harvard psychologist named William James made a speech. What he said was misinterpreted, and it became what you referenced, the 10% brain myth, the idea that, hey, I'm only using 10% of my brain at any one time, so ultimate performance, aka flow, must be my full brain on overdrive. <laughs> and it turns out uh, we had it exactly backwards. When we achieve states of ultimate performance, our brain doesn't become hyperactive, it becomes hypoactive, H-Y-P-O. Wow. It's the opposite. It starts to deactivate, it wow. shuts down. So, you know, another way of putting this is, you know, we, we've, we've all heard Huxley's famous phrase, you fling open the doors of perception. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns out, actually, no, they're shutting down on a certain, wow. on a certain level. It's, we're going in the opposite direction. What's really happening is you're trading conscious processing which is very, very potent, but it's also very, very slow, very, very energy expensive, um, and very, very limited in terms of its RAM. The number of things that the brain can consciously process at once is really small. Consciously, you, you have something called working memory, and the maximum it can hold on to at once is about nine items, but most of us tap out around four. So working memory is really, really small, very, very limited, powerful, but small. When we hmm. swip over to the subconscious, you're in much, much faster, two, two to 5,000 times faster than conscious thought, extremely energy efficient and unlimited RAM. We literally don't have any idea what the carrying capacity, the storage capacity of the subconscious actually is at this point. So, you know, researchers refer to it as essentially infinite because we can't come close to finding a limit. This is shocking to me. I'm blown away. I so you're saying that the brain actually is shutting down the the regions that make you kind of think of yourself as yeah, unable me, to do something. Let me give you a let me let, let's put it in more concrete terms. So when you move into flow, you experience transient hypofrontality transient meaning temporary hypo right we just talked about it's the opposite of hyper it means to slow down and frontality refers to the prefrontal cortex that latest greatest part of your brain so why does your sense of self and self-consciousness and that inner critic that nagging defeatist always on voice in your head that won't go away 
shut down in flow. Why does this happen? Because self is actually calculated by a bunch of different structures in the brain that are all found in the prefrontal cortex. So as parts of it start to shut out, shut down, you can no longer perform this calculation. That's the same thing. Why does time pass so strangely in flow? We've all had the experience of, you know, getting into that great conversation and an hour goes by and you think it was two minutes. Why does that happen? Because when you go into that conversation, you're, the focus that is required, what you're really looking at, by the way, is an efficiency exchange. Mm -hmm. The brain has a fixed energy budget. So when you're putting all your energy into focus and attention and being right here, right now in the present moment, mm -hmm. The brain deactivates non-critical structures to save energy and be able to give you more energy for focus and attention. It's beautiful. So when that happens, the prefrontal cortex starts to shut down. That's where your sense of time goes. Time is calculated all over the prefrontal cortex. As parts of it wink out, we can't separate past from present from future, and we're plunged into a state that uh, people will talk to. Philip Zimbardo at Stanford calls the elongated now or the deep now. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple, Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 